Hey everyone, Michael from Xano here. In this video, I'm going to cover how to set up a Google service account and also a Xano snippet that you can install directly into uh, your Xano workspace in order to interact with the Google service account uh, in whatever Xano project you're working on. But what is a Google service account and why would you want to use one? So typically when you are using a Google service, right, it's tied to your specific Google account. If you've ever gone on an application, hit continue with Google or use Google OAuth and Xano, right? Uh, it makes you select your specific Google account and then sends you back to your front end or application. A Google service account is a non-human account. So you can actually do that process without needing to actually physically click uh, and navigate to that Google hosted webpage to say, yes, use uh, my specific Google account. So it's really great to uh, interact with Google in more of an automated fashion because it doesn't require that human interaction. So this is gonna be very helpful for a lot of different use cases, especially because with Google, uh, it requires that authentication piece before you interact with any of their APIs and it can really be a head scratcher. So having a ready to go snippet and a few instructions showing you what to do with the Google service account will get you on your way to building some pretty cool stuff with Google's APIs. So right here on this Google page right here, it's part of their documentation. You can see that uh, there's some steps. We'll make sure to link this up in the snippet and in the video. Uh, first, create a uh, service account, go to the service account page. So I have that open in another tab. We're gonna create a brand new project. Uh, you can see I've done this a few times and we'll just call this um, service account example. You'll have your organization. Of course, I'm from Xano and my domain is xano.com. So that's what I'm gonna use for this example. Make sure to use whatever is relevant for you. Now, once that project is done, make sure it is selected here at the top, of course, Sometimes if you have multiple projects, uh, it won't automatically select it right away, but you can see here that we can are on the service account page and we can go ahead and create our service account. So we can give this a name. I'm just gonna say this example tutorial Xano, uh, give it a description, hit create and continue. And now you'll need to grant service account access to the project and um, this is optional going back to their instructions here. You will likely want to make this as restrictive as possible. I like to just initially to get things up and going, give myself full access because I'm probably going to be doing some testing. Um, but make sure whatever role you use is restrictive. Of course, this is optional. So read through Google's documentation uh, for your specific use case to find out what you need as well as granting users access to this service account for a user role or admin role. I can just, I'm just gonna leave this blank for now, but just may, remember that's all optional. So now that we've created it, what we actually need for Xeno to generate that access token for us is a, a JSON key. And so now the way to do that is we'll hit actions here. I'll go to manage keys. And here where it says add key, I'll just hit create new key. And you can see right here, it's defaulted on JSON, which is recommended. And that's exactly what we want in Xano. So I'll go ahead and just hit create. And you can see that downloaded a JSON file for me. So I can just go ahead and open that up. Uh, my computer happens to open that up in Firefox for me. You might have a code editor like VS Code or text editor that opens this file up. Um, I'm gonna just select raw data here and I'm gonna just copy this entire JSON object here, my JSON key. And let's go back to Xano. And if you navigate to settings and hit manage, you'll see there is a place for you to put your uh, Google JSON key. And I'm just gonna go ahead and simply paste that in and hit import. And while I'm here, this will automatically be populated for you, but I'm gonna go ahead and also write in scopes here. And I'll show you what that is later. In the snippet, this will be populated so you won't have to add this yourself. And let's just go ahead and hit save. 
Great, so now just going back to our account here, it goes through instructions on how to actually get this access token and we've set that all up for you in Xano. So let's just go to our function now and Google service account access token. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're going to first call that JSON uh, key there and we're going to decode it and store it in a variable. Okay, we're gonna extract the private key from there. We're also gonna define the scopes and the scopes are going to depend on whatever Google API endpoint that you want to interact with or and what kind of permission. So if you just search uh, Google API scopes, you'll get, you'll first thing that'll come up will be a page like this and it'll have the scope for every single API endpoint and in Google in what you wanna do. Um, for example, let's say that I want this Google Calendar one, I could copy this. This is the, looks like the full permission one. So I would wanna do that. Let's go back to settings. I know we just came from there, but let's say I would want to put that there as my scope and let's hit save. So just navigating back to my access token function here. We also get the scopes. We do uh, stuff here with the expiration of the actual token. It's going to be uh, set to uh, one hour. And then we create this object with all that information that needs to get signed here as a JWT token. And you don't need to do any settings here. This is all following uh, Google OAuth instructions here, or sorry, Google service accounts instructions from their documentation, not to be confused with the other method of authentication. And then we use that token to actually call Google API and get their access token, okay? And then we'll be able to return it here. And what that does is it authenticates us with Google. This token's good for one hour and it allows us to make calls to Google APIs. Remember, it's going to depend on what scopes you defined. And also, once you define a scope in whatever API endpoints you want to interact with or services, you'll also want to make sure to configure that in your Google console project. So this service account I created, I would just come up here and search API and services. That just got hung up a little bit, but here on APIs and services, you can just click enable APIs and services. Very easy to navigate through here. You can even use the search bar. I might go ahead and enable uh, my Google Calendar API specifically for this Google service account. Now, when interacting with Google APIs, there might be more than just enabling the Google API, defining the scope for the service account and using that token. So make sure to carefully read the documentation of whatever API endpoint you are trying to interact with. Like for example, this one I know I need additional information for Google Calendar API and to actually give my calendar access to uh, my service account, uh, which is uh, an actual email that is given in a part of that uh, JSON key here. So. For example, uh, we have our Google service account token now. So great, so typically um, what we would see here, and this function won't be part of the uh, snippet, but it is an example. So you can see I first get that token, and now I can use that token in this calendar API call. You can see down here, I use it for authorization, bear method, and use that actual access token. Uh, so that's how you would use Google service account to authenticate, get a token and call another Google API endpoint. One other thing about the access token, remember it expires after uh, an hour. So you actually don't need to call it all the time. If you have function caching enabled on your Xeno plan, you could always go to settings, enable caching. I'd recommend 30 minutes um, because the next one up is one hour and there might be some slight overlap. Um, so 30 minutes is good. So you don't need to generate a new token every time. You can, of course, just uh, keep that token cached for 30 minutes. Even if you need to um, call the Google API many times, you can use that same token. So Google service account will definitely unlock Google API endpoints for you. 
along with we already have the OAuth connection. So uh, hopefully you can build some very cool stuff with uh, Google's API now.